Okay, so now I'm going to talk to you about uh, creating a new student email. So this came to me from a customer who really needs to be able to send an email to a student that we don't currently have set up within course sales for them. Okay, so I don't know if you realize, but within course sales, you can actually set up from scratch um, a whole workflow of communicating with a student. Uh, using the uh, process paths, the process steps, the process rules, and setting up email templates. And the, and the object of this particular exercise is to take you through doing that. And at a later date, I'm going to actually have um, a tutorial about how to take that a step further and add customized content to be able to get information from the, um, from the operator or the course administrator and add that content into the email. There's a lot of really cool things you can do within course sales to make your emails, to communicate with trainers, students, uh, you name it, um, effective and, uh, and timely and, and give them all the information they need. So let's, let's get straight into it. Okay, so there are three basic steps. So I'm gonna take you through it. I'll try and do it fairly quickly because I think this is the sort of thing that you might wanna watch on the video relatively um, uh, frequently um, because getting, if you get this basic process right, you're gonna be set. You're gonna be able to create whatever sort of functionality you need to. And this is, the, this is effectively like the, the, the base level of a building block to be able to create customized um, workflow, customized um, uh, email communication with your, with your customers. So three basic steps, add an email, edit the path and create a rule. Those are the three steps. So if you know those three steps, you're gonna be sorted. So in the following steps, we're first gonna set up the email process and then plan and tweak and improve the email later. And that's what we'll do in other sessions, okay? So if you get this basic set, set up right um, and feel free to work through this in your own version of course sales, your own license and create this for yourself. Um, and you can, you can, I'm sure you can find a reason why you wanna communicate with your customers, whether it's marketing or not. Okay, so adding an email. The quickest way to create an email is to use the add based on this content button, okay? So take an existing email. Now, how do we get there? We click on the publish tab, then we click on the content icon that will give us a list of content, filter by content type email, click on the filter button, and then use this button over here. Now, let me get my, uh, let me get my little uh, spotlight up so you can see what I'm doing. So publish content, just follow the arrows, filter by content type, put on the filter, and then click on the add based on this contents button. Okay, that's a really quick way of creating a new email for a student. And of course, you can always use the new button there, a bit slower, but um, gives you an original content. So um, give the email a name you're gonna remember. So remember, it's gonna copy everything. So when you do this, everything's been gonna be copied into it. Make sure you change this name to something that you want to use. And that's all you have to do to start with, okay? We just want an email we can use. So change what you've got here, click on add, and then you're away to go. Okay, so now we're gonna edit the path. We've done the email, now it's a case of editing the path. So go and click on automation, click on paths. Now remember, if you don't have a license that's the standard license, you may not have access to creating new paths, okay? So feel free to upgrade your license if you wanna get access to that. Um, and then you can click on the edit button over here and that allows you to create, or rather edit an existing path. Easiest thing to do is to edit an existing path. Now we wanna add a process step. So while we're editing the path, click on the little plus button up to the right or wherever you want to within your path. Um, and then once you've got this new field here that's asking about process steps to be created, click on the plus button here to create a new process step. Add a name for the process step, a short label, uh, short label and a label, add a uh, what record type, this is gonna be a document record type, and you have to choose relative, uh, days relative to. So for now, let's just leave all these as what they are by default, and then click on add. Once you've done that, then make sure you type in your name of the new process step and select it from the list. Okay, now we've done that. So we've, we've, so what have we, we've created the email, we've updated the process path with our new step, Next step, last step, is to create a new rule for the step. So click on automation, click on new. Now you can also use the uh, add based on this, but generally speaking, um, uh, your process rules are gonna have to have sufficient modifications that adding a new one is, is perfectly fine. Automation, new, type in a name, choose the process step. Now I tend to try and make sure the, the name of the rule is the same as the name of the process step. Unless you've got multiple 
um, and uh, multiple rules that you want to vary, um, I recommend you keep the name of the process step, the name of the uh, process rule. Choose the email you want to send. Also choose the branch that you want to send the email from and click on add. Be sure that you also select further down in the links who you want to send the email to, which of course in this case is the student. And this is how we do it. We add roles, we select the student and we click on add. Bingo, we've added the role for the student. That's who we're going to be sending the email to. Now we want to do a test because we've done it. That's it. We're all sorted. We have our new process step, sending out a default um, a templated email to a student. We're all ready to go. So let's do a test. Let's create a document. So I recommend you sign up as a student to one of your courses. Um, and don't worry, things won't be reported on unless you apply an outcome. Um, so just don't do that and you're going to be fine. Um, choose the process step that you've just created and let's just double check that things are going to work. You can even do this on an existing student if you want to. Nothing happens by looking, by choosing the step and looking at it. Nothing happens until you try and save it. And if you don't send emails, to be honest, nothing's really, really going to happen anyway. So we click on this preview button and then up pops a little box that tells us what's going to happen. So let's read through this. What's going to happen is this process rule is going to be applied. If you want to have a look at that process rule, you can click on the magnifying glass, but an email is going to be sent. If we want to have a look at the email, we can click on the magnifying glass. It's going to be sent to the student. So in this case, it's me. And it's going to come from the branch, which in this case is me. We're not attaching any emails or, or files. So not attaching any PDFs or files. And again, we'll talk about later if you want to do that. Um, but you can always have a look at sending a statement of attainment, which is the same thing, but set up to be able to send a PDF if you want to jump ahead. So that's it. We're all sorted. We now have a new methodology of sending out an email to a student. It's a reminder email, um, and you can go in now and modify that email template to be just the message that you want, but effectively it's all set up and you're ready to go. Now, what about some other things? These are some ideas of what we can use this base configuration to do. We could send emails to trainers rather than to students. Notify a trainer what's going on. You might want to put that on the course date path rather than the document path. Perfectly fine. You might want to attach PDFs to the email. You might want to attach files to the email. All of these things we're going to be covering in future tutorials. You could send an SMS message instead. You can use that same workflow, but send an SMS message instead. We'll talk about that later too. You can trigger the email to be sent automatically. You can have it sent via a date reminder. For the reminder email, we might set to uh, be sent out two days before the course. You might want to include a link to an extranet form to get information from the student, or maybe you want to send it to the trainer. Maybe a feedback form. Ask the student to contribute some feedback or ask the trainer to contribute some feedback about the, the course. This is definitely something that any auditor who comes to your training organization um, would love to see. Love to see gathering automated communication to the trainer about feedback of the course. That's pretty cool stuff. Or you could add a similar step to the course date path. Like I said, you can actually, if you're managing venues, you could have an email that gets sent out to the venue. If you're managing um, you know, basically anything else, you could do that. So here are some useful guides. Um, so uh, it's a, the standard guides we've got there. So we have to, you can use the wizards to do some common things. You can add a support ticket if you need help. If you need immediate online help, then maybe using the online chat will work, or you can contextualize um, your assistance by clicking on the contextualize help files as well. That's a good way to do it. Go to the guides. They have lots of information in the guides, and all of these tutorials are available on our YouTube channel. So here's a quiz. Which of the following are required to set up an email in CourseSales.com? So you can feel free to, for, to choose more than one. I'll just get my chat up just to see if there's anyone here who is still listening, who wants to contribute. Um, so email content, that seems pretty obvious. Okay, email process rule. I think those first three sound pretty convincing, don't they? So let's have a look here. There we go. Um, so users are not required to send an email. Often the branch email is, is used as a sender, which does not require a user account because the branch is already set up 
and the student emails on the document. So you often don't even need to set up a user. If you need to send to a trainer, a trainer is registered as a user. So that would be a requirement there. And if you have the, the basic license, then um, you're restricted to one user. So you may want to um, set up, for example, um, uh, the, the, some of the admin to receive that email to then forward on. So yes, A, B, and C, well done, Kane, you did a great job. Okay, so what helps speed up creating the items? Which of these steps, rules, and email templates? Do you need a 40 words per minute typing speed or you just need add based on the button? Yeah, B, that's the way to go. Typing fast is helpful, but this is mostly clicking buttons and collecting values, so adding based on is much better here. So that's a really quick way of doing things. So by another question, which tips are recommended when setting up a new email to students? So keeping the name of the step and rule and email consistent, it sounds like a pretty sensible thing to do. Where you can use add based on buttons, that sounds like a good thing to do. Write everything in caps like this, probably not such a great idea. YouTube channel if you need help. Yeah, it's just obviously not using YouTube channel enough, Kane, you've got to start using that. Um, so which sequence should you use when adding a new email to students? So have a little look-see here, have a think about which step, and it's about what is required before I do the next step. So what do I need to do? For example, do I need to set up the email before I set up the step, before I set up the rule? Or do I need to set up the rule before I set up the step, so that's the email? Effectively, Anything that has the email being set up before the rule is what we need because the rule specifies what email to send. So A is the correct answer. So both the step and the email need to be added before the rule as these are specified on the rule. Ultimately, to see the step on the list, we need that step to be on the path to. Cool. Okay, so there's, here's an activity for you. Create an email to be sent to a student and then register as a student to have that email sent to you. That's a basic activity for you to carry out and it just shows you what you've been doing here. Just follow these step-by-step -step instructions. Or an advanced activity is to add a person with a different role, for example, a trainer, to the course date and then have the email sent to that role rather than the student. So um, that's a pretty cool thing to do. So I can still see we've still got Kane on the line. Good on you for hanging around, Kane. It's been a long day for you. Let's unmute you just see if you can Think of any ways you can make use of this or uh, <clears throat> I've already made, Well, yeah, I've already made use of being able to send emails to uh, my teachers or trainers uh, for cool. working with Children Check. I copy them in on an email, which is also sent to the person that's purchased the course. Could be a trainer, could be a business owner. And that way they get the email automatically to check a working with children check for my trainers. Oh, cool. Oh, very awesome. So it sounds like it's even more than just the trainer. It's actually to a, a business owner as well. So did yep. you create a new role for that and, and add them onto the course date? I, yeah, I've made them the customer contact within right. the system and then the trainer has their role and then I added the two of them onto the uh, process step so, and then set the email up so that they both get the same email at the same time. Ah, magic. You've gone even past the advanced level. Yes. <laughs> You're a guru. Okay, 